We have up to 70 mile an hour winds here in the UK at the moment and I thought what a perfect opportunity to get out and take some photos. So I'm headed for the aptly named Windy Post on Dartmoor National Park to take some long exposure photography. Let's jump in. The plan is one composition, three exposures. A nice long exposure, streaks in the sky, slow water, a nice fast exposure where the water is frozen and the clouds are nicely formed and then somewhere nicely in the middle will do and then what we'll do is we'll play about in Photoshop to see which one of those looks the best with which combination. So I'm going to swap out the long exposure sky with the short exposure image. So I'll play around with those. But first of all, I've set up my first composition and I'm just playing about with the settings. So we'll get down there and have a look at that now. We're all set up. The first composition, I have inverted my stem. And the reason I, do, I have done that is because I want the cross to be prominent into the sky. If I'm too high, it's going to be a lot of background in there and it's, it might potentially look a little bit messy. So I've come down as low as I can to get that cross in there. Now, I don't want to come too low that I include too much of this foreground in the image. So, And also, I don't want to lose the detail going through the image as well. So if I'm too low, I'll lose that detail. So I'm using the top right hand side uh, for the cross and the start of the water, bottom left leading into it. I'm taking multiple exposures because it's very windy and I'm on the stem inverted so there is potential for camera shake and I don't want to do that and what I'm using is a 10 stop ND filter for this one and this is going to be the middle of the road shot I've got the polarizer on to cut the glare out of the water my 10 second exposure for a minute and what I'm doing is I'm just gonna play around with the exposures and try and bring it down and up a little bit just to see what it does uh, F9 and ISO 100 and I've also got a couple of, I don't know if you can see them on camera, the Dartmoor ponies are just coming into frame. So they may ruin this whole thing by just standing in the middle of my image. So this may or may not work. So I'm gonna get on and start taking those photos and I will pop the final fin uh, finished photo of this one up on the screen now. Right, so I've got the super stopper on now and it's quite hard because the light's so interchangeable, it's a bit hard to predict the right settings for this. I've just gone with a 1 minute 40 exposure and it's a little bit underexposed so I'm going 2 minute 40 now and we're going to see what that turns out like and just by looking at the back of the camera now at this 1 minute 40 exposure one I think it's going to look really good in black and white however we now have quite a few of these ponies in the background so I'm not sure how this is going to turn out because they are moving slowly through the image and it's going to create a blur so it's going to be if it was stood still, it wouldn't be too bad. I could crop them out, clone them out. Um, but as they are moving through the image, it might it might affect how good this image turns out. But we'll wait and see. I'll pop it up on the screen now. So one final image at F9, one four hundredth of a second at ISO 100, and I'll pop that image up now. Right, so we're back at the computer and I've got the images up on the screen. I've done a quick edit on them and the middle of the road one I'm not overly happy with. I don't think it offers anything new that the other two don't that the other two already offer. So I'm not going to include that one in this. So I'm just going to do a really long exposure and a really short and then I'm just going to swap the skies and see which one's best. So let's head into Lightroom and we will edit those up and we'll compare them at the end. Okay, so since we're ignoring the middle one, I'm just going to select the first and the third image, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now we have our layers open, we just need to do a couple of things first. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this. It looks like somebody was stood there, so I've got a bit of shadow in. So I'm going to clone stamp that out of there, make sure that layer is selected. And then I'm just going to remove that. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is highlight both the layers, edit, and then we're going to auto align the layers. And then, wow, that was quite far out. And then what we're going to do is just going to crop in like so. So now we have two images that are aligned. So now once I've got my images as they are, I'm going to duplicate, oops, wrong one, duplicate the layers. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it fast. Now, this one will be with fast water. This one will be with slow water. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to get rid of the sky. So ordinarily what we would do is we'd create a mask 
and then we'd get our brush tool and then we would just paint on the layer paint on the layer underneath and we'd end up with a blended image but instead what we're going to do is we're going to click select the sky we're going to get the whole of that sky selected by photoshop and then we're just going to hit the delete key and then we're going to deselect and we have our final image and i think that's done a pretty good job i'm quite happy with that so that one and then we're going to do the same with the final image on the other one which is this one so this was our slow uh, slow water and this one's going to be our fast water so this one what we need to do is just switch these two images around select sky and then hit delete again and then you see here oops select deselect and you'll see here this has done a pretty good job again this masking wasn't the best i did this quite quick i should probably make that a lot better but for the demonstration purposes i think that is a pretty good image so i can tell you now this is going to be my favorite image because the water is so vibrant and it's just it's just frozen it just gives it more character and the sky in the background because it's it's streaking across the sky i don't think it just distracts you from the main part of the image which is the water and then obviously the cross so i think that having the sky the way it is is a lot better it's almost like removing the colors from an, you know when you get an area in a photo what the you that draws your eye to you just take the colors out of it a little bit to stop distracting you and this is kind of what that does with the sky so if you go over to this image and you see the sky it's almost like a character in itself so i think that can be quite distracting so I'll pop them up on the screen and you can have a look for yourself and see which one you think is the best image. Right, so that's the images. I've put all the images up on the screen so you can compare the Swap Sky ones to the original ones as they come out of the camera. Which ones did you feel like was the best out of the, out of the bunch? I, I prefer the one with the faster water and the slower clouds. I just think the water adds something to it. Um, but they all, they all look quite nice, I think. Um, I'd love to know what you think of it, so please do comment down below which one you thought was the best image out of them all. And uh, just leaves me to say thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.